With the cool temperatures that we have right now in early September, it's the ideal time for overseeding cool season grass. Many people are looking to get out, overseed, and improve the overall health and quality of their grass. However, there are some common mistakes that many people make that end up costing them time, money, and throwing away all the effort they put into overseeding their lawn. Overseeding is the process of incorporating new grass seed into an existing lawn with the goals of thickening up your grass. However, it's not for everybody, and the first common mistake that too many people make is overseeding when it's not necessary. Grass seed is expensive. The process of overseeding is time consuming, and too many people think that just because their grass is brown right now after the summertime, that they have to overseed. Cool season grass is very resilient, and what it does in the summertime during the heat and some of the drought that we get, it turns brown and goes dormant, which confuses many people into thinking that their grass is dead. If you have a pretty well established lawn, but it's just brown, waiting for the temperatures to cool down and waiting for that rain that we get in the fall or adding some irrigation of your own may be all you need to do. Overseeding is best for a lawn that has thin patchy areas or overall bare dirt spots that you need to fill in to make your lawn more uniform. If your lawn is already pretty thick, fertilizing instead of overseeding in the fall is probably the best option for you. Trying to get down at least a couple pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet and it's going to allow that grass to start growing really nicely and you're going to get the thick turf that you're looking for. The second common mistake that too many people make when overseeding their lawn is doing this at the wrong time of year. For cool season grass, there is an optimal window for overseeding and it is right now in early September. Right after Labor Day, typically the temperatures start to go down and it's the optimal time for overseeding. What you wanna do is make sure that you give that grass seed at least 30 to 45 days to germinate and establish itself before you get your first hard frost or your first freeze of the season, which can be detrimental to new grass seed. For those of you with warm season grass, overseeding in the fall is not a good idea because your grass is starting to decline and it's gonna be turning dormant soon because of the cooler temperatures. Instead, understanding that your grass spreads by rhizomes and stolons, whether you have Bermuda, St. Augustine, Zoysia, Centipede, Bahia grass, those things all spread on their own and they're gonna fill in without needing to overseed your grass. The next common overseeding mistake that you want to avoid is overseeding with the wrong type of grass seed. It may be easy to walk into Lowe's or Home Depot and see the cheapest bag of grass seed you can find and thinking it's going to be the same as everything else, but it's important to look at the label and figure out what type of grass seed you're putting out on your lawn. For cool season grass like I have, what I recommend is perennial ryegrass or turf type tall fescue. Those two things germinate very quickly which allow them to get established before you get that first freeze. The fourth common mistake when overseeding that you want to try to avoid is just throwing grass seed down over your lawn with no prep work. While it's not that difficult to overseed your lawn, there are a few steps you want to take before doing your overseed. The first thing is bringing down your height of cut on your grass. If you've kept your grass long throughout the summertime, around four inches or maybe even taller, you definitely want to bring that down somewhere around two inches to do your overseed. While you don't want to hack off all of your grass at one time, if you keep it at four inches, mow it three inches. Try to get it used to that for about a week and then try to bring it down to about two inches and that's the ideal height of cut for your overseed. What that's gonna do is allow that grass seed to be able to fall down to the soil level where it can make contact with the dirt and create that new grass that you're looking to grow. Some other practices that help with this is dethatching your lawn. Whether you have a thatch problem or not, going through with a dethatcher is gonna rough up the soil and it's gonna create a seed bed for that grass to drop into and allow it to start growing. Aeration is another process that can be done before seeding your lawn, which can also help with the results of your overseed. If you are planning on dethatching before overseeding your grass, make sure to clean up all of that dead organic material before you go to put your grass seed down. You want those seeds to be able to fall down into the soil level, which is gonna allow them to germinate as quickly as possible. The fifth common mistake that we wanna to try to avoid when overseeding our lawn has to do with fertilization. Applying the wrong type of fertilizer after doing your overseed can completely ruin all the work that you've put in. If you put down a fertilizer like a weed and feed, 
that weed killer is also going to prevent your grass seed from germinating. So make sure you do not put down a weed and feed product or if you go and you spray for weeds after you've put down your grass seed, it's going to do the same thing and keep that grass from germinating. Also, high nitrogen fertilizers like a Scott's Turf Builder synthetic fertilizer, that's not ideal for freshly overseeded lawns. Instead, you could put down a fertilizer that's a starter fertilizer, or you can put down an organic fertilizer like the chicken poo that I've used in the past with great results. Our sixth common mistake when overseeding has to do with watering after you've overseeded. If you just throw grass seed down over your lawn and you expect it to start growing, unless you get ideal conditions and the appropriate amount of rain, that grass seed is not gonna take off on its own. So it's important that for at least two weeks, you're making sure that that grass seed stays wet. It doesn't need to be soaked, but you need to make sure that it doesn't dry out before it can shoot a root down into the ground. Once it's become more established, you can pull off on the watering, and then you're gonna get the results that you're looking for. The seventh and final mistake that too many people make when overseeding their lawn has to do with mowing too soon after overseeding. If you do that, if you've overseeded your lawn, you've taken the time to take all the right steps, but you get out and you mow too early, the suction that's created from your mower can suck up that grass seed, which is basically like throwing that money you spent on the seed right out the window. Instead, what you wanna do, allow that seed to have at least two weeks to establish itself, start growing. Even though the rest of your lawn is gonna be pretty overgrown after two weeks, that's the best plan of action. What you can do then after two weeks is put your mower on its highest setting, cut the grass at that high level, get it used to that, and then gradually bring it down to the height of cut where you want it. If you can do that and follow all of these steps, you're gonna have amazing results with your overseed. As always, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.